Now's not the right time. Let me think about it and I'll get back to you. Hey guys, it's Douglas James. Hey, welcome back. So I'm excited about this video. This video is going to be pretty cool and it's going to kind of break down some boundaries around like urgency in life there. We are presented so many times with opportunities, opportunities to better ourselves, to maybe even start a business, to do something special for a friend or family member, to take a trip, to get into uh, an investment early. Like I wish I could go back and, and uh, purchase Bitcoin when it was like a few cents. I'll be a multi-billionaire today, right? <laughs> we are all uh, coming in, in contact with these different unique opportunities, right? If you were to look at our life when it starts, we are on a path. And if you were to look at the decisions and the paths you possibly could have gone down, it would look like this crazy spider web of tree roots going in multiple different directions, but you chose this one little path that you keep going on, but there's all these other paths that you could have gone on. And then if you look at your life where you're at right now, there's that crazy spider web. You're right here, but there's that crazy spider web and, and root tree of all these different options of where you can go, right? And it's important to understand that in life, we're presented with opportunities that we don't get, get often. And a lot of them are very rare, unique that don't happen. So what I want to talk to you a little bit more about in this video is how to overcome those thoughts and those ideas. When you tell yourself now is not a good time, I need to think about it and, and procrastinate and put things off because this is the number one killer of dreams, procrastination. Procrastination is the number one killer of all dreams. We get in our own way 100% of the time and we have to get past it. So let me use the example of starting an online business because I think that it's very relevant. I'm an entrepreneur. I'm a coach, mentor to many people. And one of the things that I do on the daily basis is I help people build and grow their businesses online generally. That's what I do. I do it with online advertising, online marketing, things of that such. So let's start talking about having an online business. I think for me personally, there's no question, for example, there's no question that having a business that you can do from home where you're making money using the internet, that's no longer just convenient, okay? So before the pandemic hit some time ago, this whole idea of having an online business was like a thing that was convenient, something that you can do, okay, cool, I can work from home, I can make money and go out, live my life. But now that the economy has changed so much, now that the pandemic hit, it's virtually changed, virtually changed everything about how people perceive jobs, companies, people that were working corporate, 40% of all corporations have moved, major corporations have moved their employees to remote working from home and showing up to Zoom calls every day, right? I wish I would have bought Zoom stock, right? It blew up, but people are working from home now. And a lot of people are still un unemployed and there's, there's a massive boom happening right now as I'm recording this video. And as you're watching this right now, there's a massive boom of people taking advantage of having an online business and starting an online business. So having an online business and being able to work from home is no longer just convenient. It's a necessity. It's a necessity. There's no question you know you need to be doing something online. There's no question. We all know that we need to be having an online business doing something from home. Lucky for me and my family, I caught this trend years ago and I've been able to do it. I've also helped many other people do it along the way. But now that we've had this change in our economy and how the world is operating, it's no longer just convenient to have an online business from home. It's a necessity. So with that being said, let me talk to you about protection and security. Okay. I was in the Navy for 10 years. So I got my uniform right here. I was in the Navy for 10 years. I wore this for 10 years. I got out as an E6. I got a bunch of awards. I was shipboard. That means I was on sea. I did tours in Fiji, Papua New Guinea. I went to Italy for a couple years. I got to do amazing, cool stuff. Wore this for 10 years. Loved every minute of it. Yes, there was a lot of tough, challenging times. But the number one thing that the military taught me, it taught me 
self-discipline. Okay. It taught me accountability and preparation. That was probably the biggest things outside of like integrity, honor, courage, commitment, all that stuff. It, it really comes down to self-discipline and really self-discipline and preparation and accountability. That's really the main three things that I'm going to mention here. And you have to have the self-discipline and the wherewithal to do the work and to do what it takes to succeed. You have to be have the accountability to, to take ownership. Being successful online and having a business that's paying you from home takes a lot of self-discipline, self-accountability. You have to be somebody that says, hey, if something breaks, if something goes wrong, it's my fault. Let me go fix it. You're not one of those people that points fingers and looks for someone to blame. You take self-accountability 100% of the time. And preparation. I can't tell you guys how many times when I was gearing up for a deployment or gearing up for a mission or going out to do something or, or, or to achieve something with my team. When I was in the military, guys, we trained nonstop. I went and trained with the, Marine Corps, the Marines as well. I learned how to fight in the field. Guys, we prepared. We trained our weapons, our gear, our sack, our rucksack, every, everything we train daily for hours and hours and hours every single day. I learned that if I'm not prepared, if I don't have the self-discipline and accountability to achieve the mission and get to where I'm trying to go and do the work that is necessary to succeed, I will fail. There is probably going to be an economic collapse at some point in the near future. It could be next month. It could be next year. It could be next decade. Who knows? Maybe by the time you're watching it, it's already happened and the next one could be coming at some point. I don't know. But are you prepared for an economic collapse? Are you prepared to take care of your family, pay your bills, put food on the table, have shelter, if the economy collapses, will you still have income? Do you have job security? Do you feel like you have job security? Are you prepared? Are you protected? Do you have security? Have you built up a defense for yourself? These are things that the military has taught me. And I've came into the civilian world. You may or may not be in the military. Most of the people that I talk to and engage with and help with their online businesses uh, less than 5% of them were in the military. Well, generally, I'm talking to, to, to folks that came from corporate or work in a nine to five or have a business in some way, shape or form, just, or just an average Joe. Are you prepared for an economic collapse? This is the biggest thing that the military taught me. I, I implemented in the real world. And now my family has, never has to worry about that. All right. You have to strike first. You have to strike fast and you have to have a plan. Do you have a plan for when that happens? Because it's coming and you need security. You need to be able to pay the bills. You got to be able to take care of yourself, take care of your family. You got to have income. You got to have money. Money makes the world go round. Guys, with that being said, look, it's not it goes back to my initial point. It's no longer just convenient. You, it's a necessity to have a business. It's a necessity to have an income stream that's paying you while you sleep. That's outside of what you may be doing right now. And there's a lot of things and there's a lot of things you could be doing online and a lot of people promising a lot of things, but does it really work? I don't know. I can tell you one of the things that we've done at this point, I've coached over 2,500 people on how to get small local businesses all over the world to pay them anywhere between one to $5,000 a month to help them get new customers. Businesses, small businesses are the lifeblood of the country, lifeblood of the world, right? Without small businesses, you don't have an economy. So they're always going to need customers. The dentist is always going to need people with, that need dental work, dental cleanings, dental implants, Invisalign, chiropractors. People are always going to need adjustments. Gyms, people are always going to need to work out and lose weight, right? Restaurants, people always need to eat. Car dealerships, people are always going to buy cars, whether they're electric or they're motors, they're going to need cars, right? Small businesses businesses is where the money's at. If you can figure out how to partner with them, help them use the internet to get customers, they will pay you handsomely. And that's what I figured out. That's what I'm be able to teach. And that is my game plan. That is how I have set up the proper defense and security for my family. And I prepared for an economic collapse. Because if there's an economic collapse, I know I have secured deals and contracts, and I have strategies that are foolproof that can help these businesses get customers no matter what's going on in the economy. And they're going to continue to pay me and they're going to continue to thrive because when the pandemic, for, for example, when the pandemic first hit, it was scary. We were, we were all freaking out. I had conversations with all of our clients. What we were doing was so dialed in. It didn't matter. 
They continued to do business. It was all good. We didn't have to worry about anything. And that's the type of security and plan and game plan that you need to have. Because what's going to happen when the lights go out? What's going to happen when you lose your job? What's going to happen when you can't pay the bills? You need to have a game plan. You need to be prepared. And I owe it all to the Navy for what they've been able to teach me in the amount of preparation. I would say this too. Have extreme ownership. Take ownership of your life, of your situation. I'll tell you this quick story. I was stationed in Italy. I've, I don't tell this story too often. I was stationed in Italy. I was actually working in a lab. I was working nights at the time. Some baby blood came in. Uh, a mom just gave birth and they sent down, set the baby's blood down to the lab for me to test to figure out what type of blood type it was. It was probably 3 a.m. I did the test and I, I, I did the test and it takes about 30 minutes. And I came to the conclusion that the baby's type was, uh, I think it was, I want to say it was a positive. I'm not sure. I, I can't remember. It was a long time ago. Well, come to find out the next morning, my boss comes in, they double check my work. I go home and I come into work the next night, the next day. And my boss tells me, Hey, you mistyped that baby blood. She was actually O negative F word, <laughs> right? That's not good. Cause what, what would happen? If I would have, I reported that, and if for whatever reason that day before my boss checked my work, if the baby needed a blood transfusion, they would have sent down the wrong blood. The baby would have had a reaction and probably died, and I would have be responsible that I might have would have killed someone. When my boss told me that, show me the results, because there was a shift change too. I could have easily said, "Hey, it was this person," or "Hey, it was this person that came on the shift that you know they they retested or they mistyped my result." I took ownership. I said, ma'am, you're exactly right. I mistyped that. It's my fault. What do you want to do? I took ownership, guys. In life, there's many times that you're going to be wrong and there's times you're going to be right, but you have to have extreme ownership of your situation, have extreme ownership of your life, of your business, of your family. You have to keep yourself accountable. And that's the only way you're going to have success and have integrity in all you do. These opportunities that I'm talking to you about today, in life, we all come uh, across these opportunities. And if we miss out, we have regret. And regret's a horrible thing too. Fear of missing out, having FOMO. We, you know, we, we, a lot of times, you know, things pass us by and we don't want to miss it. And we, get, we have massive regret if we miss it. That FOMO, that excitement that you feel when something comes up, that's real. That's real. Don't ignore that. Take action. Take action on that because let me tell you about regret. Let me tell you what regret sounds like. So my dad, growing up, I watched my dad beat my mom, run around with hookers, do cocaine, um, gamble. He got into over $100,000 in debt with my mom, and we lost our house. My mom was uh, worked in the hospital. She made good money, but we lost our house. We were on the street. At 14 years old, we were on the street. Me and my sister, my mom, and my dad were on the street. And if it wasn't for my uncle and my grandma, we would have been lost forever. They helped us get into an apartment, pay for the rent. I didn't. I had the worst relationship growing up with my dad. I watched him do horrible things and say horrible things. He even beat me and my sister. But now that we're older, I have a child. I have a family. My sister's a lot older. You know, every Christmas I get this. I see my dad. He's in his mid to late 50s now, a lot more chilled out. But when I see him, he cannot stop apologizing. And he cries and he cries and he says he's sorry and he's sorry because he's getting to the end of his life. He's still young. That's still, don't get me wrong. He's still young. He's got ways to go, but he has massive regret because he know he must, he know he messed up. And when I see that look in that man's eyes, I never want to feel that for me, for my family. And I don't want that for you. Regret is a horrible thing, guys. When you're feeling that FOMO, or if you're feeling that opportunity, or if, you're, or if you're feeling that excitement, take advantage of it. Listen to your heart. Listen to your gut. Jump on it. Because it's the only way. It's the only way you're going to succeed. The biggest people, most successful people in the world, Jeff Bezos didn't build Amazon by just sitting around and not doing anything. He took action. He saw a want to need. He saw an opportunity took action. Elon Musk is launching rockets outside of NASA protocol or working with NASA using his own technology and his own experience and his own team. That just doesn't happen. He has a vision. He is taking action. You need to have the same mindset, same mentality, change the way you're thinking about these things and you will be way better off. 
So that's all I got for you today, guys. It's no longer convenient. It's a necessity. Consider starting a business. Do something online where you can take care of your family from home. Because one day you may experience multiple economic collapses. Are you prepared? Are you going to be able to pay the bills? Are you going to be able to pay for food? If you have something set up, set up online coming in, you should be good to go. So it's Douglas James. I'll see you in my next video. Thanks. Thanks.